Let's talk about what not to do when planning out your week. I'm sure if you clicked on this video, then you are looking for tips and tricks and advice for how to get your life organized and how to better plan things out so that your life runs smoothly and you're getting as much done as possible. You are in luck because the theme of this entire channel is giving you easy ways to simplify your life and live a more purposeful and productive life to free up time for who and what matters to you. If if you are new, big welcome. I'm Amber with Solutions for Simplicity, and today we are going to delve into the biggest planning mistakes that I have both made myself and that I see a lot of other people making. But don't worry, we are not only going to talk about what not to do, I'm going to give you lots of advice for the ways that you should be approaching how you plan your day, your week, and your life in general. So if you are excited, give this video a big thumbs up and let's get going. The number one thing not to do is to not have a plan. I know this might sound really obvious, but I have done this plenty of times and I'm betting that you have too, right? Even if you tend to plan out your life, I'm sure there are also plenty of other times where you don't have a plan in place and you then kind of go through the day knowing that you have some things you should be doing, but you're not using your time as productively and intentionally as you could or should. So we wanna avoid that. Last week, I talked about four reasons why you need to plan. And again, it's about finding this balance between having a plan and a structure in place, you know, these well-organized schedules and to-do lists, and then on the opposite side, not planning at all and just going with the flow so much so that perhaps you are wasting your precious time and energy when you could be using it for other things. We want to find that happy medium and believe me, it is possible. So I want to share with you all these other ways that we can plan for success. Mistake number two is so big and it is one that I have made so many times. That is to let planning take on a life of its own. If we become so absorbed in making a plan and planning everything out just so, then we are over on that side of being too extreme and too rigid and too focused on the structure. We also can waste a lot of time. In other words, we can use planning as its own form of procrastination. And rather than just doing the stuff that we know we should be doing, it's really easy to think, oh, you know, my old plan fell apart. I need to just sit down and make a new plan or I'm gonna sit down for a little bit and then that turns into an hour or more. It is really important that we do have a regular time to plan, but that we are not letting plan planning take so much time that it interferes with us actually getting our work done. Tell me in the comments if you've ever made this mistake because I'm hoping I'm not alone. Mistake number three is trying to plan for too far into the future. I know that we all you know, crave predictability, but the reality is that there is this sweet spot for how long we can actually plan before life comes up and our plans get derailed. And if we try and plan for too much of a, of a time period at once and then these unexpected things happen, we end up feeling like a failure, we miss deadlines, we just you know, fall into these really, really bad situations that we want to avoid. So I will be sharing with you much more advice in the coming weeks for how long at a time we should try and plan and what that sweet spot is. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, now would be a great time to do that so you don't miss these upcoming videos. Mistake number four is the opposite of mistake number three. That is being too short-sighted and not having some overarching goals or vision that we are working towards. It is so essential that when we are thinking about making plans, we have these broader ambitions and milestones in mind that we want to achieve. But then we obviously need to work backwards and break those big projects up into the small component steps that we can actually put into our schedule and put into our specific plans. But if we are trying to plan without knowing what we're working towards, then we're never gonna really get anywhere and we certainly won't reach the success we might be seeking. So don't let this happen to you. Really make sure that everything you are doing has a purpose, that it is leading you towards where you want to go. 
Mistake number five is one I know you have made. We are all so guilty of this. That is trying to cram way too much into our plans. It is human nature to think that we can handle more than we can and to vastly underestimate the amount of time that something is going to take to get completed. We Again, we all do this, but it sets our plans up for failure because then we haven't allowed enough time or flexibility to actually accomplish what we might need to do do. We might say yes to extra commitments or obligations and then be unable to fulfill what we have set out to do. And it really just leads to a bunch of stress and can make us so overwhelmed. It is really important that we instead make sure and be very specific about what we are taking on and that we double or triple the amount of time we estimate something is going to take so that we are planning on things taking longer than we might have originally thought. You can check out my biggest productivity mistakes video for so much more on this. Mistake number six is to not leave any wiggle room or any cushion during our days. If we try and plan out every single minute of every single day, then inevitably our plans will fail because again, things come up and take longer than we expect. So we need to make sure that we are allowing time for transitions between tasks, for time driving to and from wherever we need to go, for things like making meals or going to the restroom or just all these little things that really do add up over the course of our day. We can't just immediately switch between one thing and the next. So we need to make sure and have these cushions in place so that we are not, again, over scheduling all that we're trying to undertake. Mistake number seven is to not batch similar kinds of tasks. If you haven't heard about batching before, it's a really simple concept and I tell you, it is a game changer. All this means is that we try and schedule in the same kinds of activities or to-dos at the same time period, that we have a block of time allotted for that particular kind of task. And then doing those similar things in the same time period, again, minimizes the attention and energy costs that are associated between switching between different kinds of tasks. We can save so much effort if we just consolidate what we are trying to do and make sure that we are really finding those similar things so we can be as efficient and effective as possible. Okay, tell me if you are guilty of mistake number eight because it took me a long time to get this one straightened out. But that is the mistake of being disorganized with how we plan. If we keep certain notes on paper or have a paper planner that we keep at home and then we're out and about and we're trying to make notes on our phone, then everything is in different places and we don't have it in one handy consolidated spot that we can easily access whenever we need it. So the flip side, the, the thing to do is make sure that we are keeping all of our plans, all of our to-dos, everything that needs to be done in a set, organized manner, whether this is a paper system or a digital system. And if you're interested, I'm going to be having a video coming up where I give you not only some of the best apps you can use for scheduling and planning, but also the best planners for busy moms. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you can see how I do things. Mistake number nine is to change up our plans in the middle of carrying them out. Now again, sometimes life comes up and we have to stop what we're doing in order to address an urgent situation. But there are so many other times where I know I'm guilty of this. I abandon my plan because some new fun opportunity comes up and I think, okay, you know, I'm going to do this and I'll just deal with the consequences later. But obviously then that failure, that mistake is on us. If we take the time to plan and know what we should be doing, then we need to carry out those plans to fulfillment so that we get those tasks completed and we're not weighed down by the emotional stress of pushing them out into the future or missing deadlines or letting other people down. We've got to really ask ourselves for each new thing that comes up, does this have to happen right now? Is it more important than what I'm supposed to be doing? And is there another more appropriate time where I can either do this new thing or schedule it in down the road? I would really encourage you to catch yourself in the moment when you feel that temptation and really then just take a note of what it is you might want to do later and 
And then next time you go to plan, find a specific time where you actually can do that thing. Mistake number 10 is to not follow your plan. If we go to all the trouble of planning things out, then why is it so easy for us to agree to do some new thing or, you know, just choose to do the opposite of what we know we're supposed to be doing? We might turn on a show and lose track of time. We might stay up too late and then not have the mental energy and focus and willpower that we need the next day to make the choices to stay on task. It's also so easy, you know, if a new invitation comes up to be like, oh yeah, sure, I can wait on this and I'll, I'll do the new thing now. But again, the more that we let our plans slide and the more relaxed we are with sticking to the plans we set out for ourselves, the farther away our goals and ambitions are. We've got to hold ourselves to the plans that we make and again, build in cushions, build in downtime so that we're not being super strict and authoritarian with ourselves, but we are also using time to our advantage. Each of us only has so many hours in a day or in a week and this is such a great opportunity to make sure that you are truly aligning your time with your values. I'm going to be talking so much more about all of these things during the next few weeks. Every video is going to be on this planning theme and I've got so much advice coming at you. So make sure that you are subscribed if you're not already. Share this video with someone that is looking for planning tips as well. Make sure and follow me on Instagram because I've got so much more daily advice that I give out there. And last but not least, you can always check out my website, solutionsforsimplicity.com to get even more resources on how to better plan and organize your life. Thanks so much for being here and now jump straight into these other videos to learn more about how I plan my life so that you can better plan yours as well. Thanks again. I'll see you next week. Have a great day.